He's just so responding. If you guys notice that you're walking past the camera, it's because not all of us are 80 and we cannot keep up. Okay. I was walking <laughs> so slow as I could. To, I told you. Yeah, think you go 40. Slower. Think okay. 40. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Maybe I try to think 120. Huh? Yeah. Maybe you should double it. Go 160. <laughs> okay, we're rolling. We're rolling. And action, pow! Okay. So the, the and, and so we're all masters in this familiar world. We're responding to the solicitations, people would, uh, Heidegger would say, or Merleau-Ponty would say, of these affordances, that's the other language, that is, that the, that the door affords going out, and when you uh, need to go out, then you just respond. The door calls you, and you, your hand begins to take the shape of the doorknob, and you don't, without even knowing, or uh, without remembering, or without even seeing how the doorknob actually looks, your, your brain takes care of it and you go out. So the traditional philosophers and the, um, uh, uh, the people who believed that artificial intelligence would be possible, if they were going to program a computer or a robot to function in the world, they would say, okay, well, doorknobs have these properties uh, or chairs have these properties. And so the computer would have to look at the chair, say, oh, well, it has four legs yeah. and therefore it must be a chair. And that's Whereas right. we can sit on that's something right. that has an infinite number of different well, yeah, we, that, we can sit in, in, bean, in bean bag chairs and we can sit on, on logs and we can uh, and so forth. We, so what a chair is, that's one thing, is something so uh, variable and so context dependent that it's really impossible to give a, d a, a good definition of what it has, what properties it has to have. But that's what they would have to do. And they would also have to then say, of course, when it has those properties, it has this function. Chairs are to sit on. And then, then they would say, so when you have to sit down, you have to find something with those properties, and then you apply the rule. Uh, and, and, and does intelligent behavior uh, require us to have chairs and things and objects, or could you have an intelligent behavior that doesn't care about chairs and just is, you know, just pure thought? I mean, it seems like we have, it's very important that, you, you think that it's very important that we have bodies and we function in this shared world, right? That's right. With shared practices and shared equipment. That's right. Why is yeah. that important? It's Most of us think of thought as an abstract thing. Yeah, like, right. oh, well, right. I'm intelligent because okay. I can make calculations or I can okay. apply rules. And, and why is yeah. intelligence not that? Well, it is that. And, and that's one of the things we can do. It's what, what Heidegger discovered isn't that we don't use rules and don't solve problems and and recognize objects and all the things that you just described that, that it looks like to the AI people. We do that, but only when something goes wrong and only always on the basis of the general shared familiarity that, that we're coping with when we're in a room, that's a familiar room. So it, Heidegger just it went beneath them and saw that they begin, the tradition begins and the AI people being part of the tradition begin a step too late. They begin at the point where something, for some reason, I'm learning it or it's not functioning right, makes us have to think. Then we think. But most of the time, we just cope. We just take, do, do whatever is calling us to be needing to be done. If the room is hot, we, without even noticing, we can be going over and opening the window. And and what is the importance of this world being shared? And that these practices of doors and chairs and equipment, that we all have a, a shared practices around yeah, this versus yeah. it just being an, a, a personal An experience individual of these thing. Things. Well, it's, it's important just because it's how things are, I think. It's not it's sort of not necessary. You could be a, a lone person, a sort of Robinson Crusoe, uh, and on an island with and or or raised by wolves and with anyway i mean the fact that it's all shared is important because it's because that's how the world is uh and but uh but it seems like a lot of our practices you know if uh uh uh, uh you know a basketball player uh any 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 master in any field seems to have uh, a, a depend on a sh world of shared equipment. You don't think that that's a necessary? No, I don't know. I mean, suppose you're an archer, which is a famous Zen kind of mastery. An archer is a one-man thing. 
I mean, it's true that there have to be somebody to build bows and arrows, and there has to be somebody, uh, there could be somebody else too, but I, and I don't think skills require shared practices. They require equipment, but it might be just equipment for this, this that I just saw this movie. Okay, hold on. But hold on, isn't it, isn't it um, 